seeing the show, he, he uh, I guess what most stood out in his mind was how it sort of mellowed out, and the mellowing out of, of Ian was sort of taking place towards the end of Back on the Bunny. Yeah. Is it just the, uh, that, that evolution is going to continue? Yeah. Well, a lot of people say that, but I, I don't know if I have no idea. I don't freak out as much on stage, but, I, you know, I, I, know, I suppose I have not of you know, people who say that you have, you must know. Um, it, I don't know, it's just different kinds of songs, I think, with the Bunnymen, a lot of the first batch of stuff that we did, that, you know, we were 19 or whatever, 18, and it was just after punk, so we, I think we were all influenced by that attitude as well. I think, I think the attitude, more than the songs, were... I'll rephrase that one. Um, you know, I don't think a song like Kill a Moon or... Stars and Stars was particularly uh, unmellow, but it was the attitude maybe that, that we gave off or I gave off that was that was where the the aggression or whatever was. But um, I think I don't know. I, I seem to um, there's less of me kind of wanting to create. Uh, an image or whatever, because I mean, it's probably taking some now for me to get feel comfortable on stage. You know, although, having said that, I don't feel comfortable. <laughs> but when it comes to singing, like, I feel more confident about the singing and, and, that, and that side of it. Um, plus, um, I think in the early days we had such a crap sound man on stage. Early on, you couldn't hear what the sod you doing anyway, so uh, we just hit things harder and scream more, you know, because now we've got Rick, who's fantastic. Cheers. No, but that is a big difference, because on stage with the bunny man early on, you couldn't hear a thing after the time. Because Pete used to have, used to use loads of kind of side fills, and, and we're not using amps in the way that we did with the bunny man, it goes through effects and stuff, so you don't get all that horrible racket coming out of the arms. So maybe that's it, maybe I was always mellow, it was just I couldn't hear me, so. あの、he says that one of the reasons he got the impression that you know it out was also because your in, your uh, banter in between the songs there and this new yeah. stage feel is a little bit more yeah. relaxed and that easy. Yeah, I think, um, I can't remember whether with the bunny man I did, I think towards the end I was doing that, I know in 87 in Brazil, I, that was where I first started actually 
talking to the audience just because the vibe there was great. And, you know, I'm not always like that. Last night I didn't really say that much. It just depends on how I'm feeling, you know. Um, yeah, it's kind of good to do it, like, you know, because hopefully something will happen, something will say something worth it here in the audience. Although usually they don't, you know, so... I don't know, um, yeah, I... It's not mellow enough though, just because you're like a community thing. Well, don't you think that the people might be somewhat intimidated by your stage persona and you might lash out and do things with your picture? Yeah, I mean, I think... With the Bunnymen, I know that a lot of people, that was half the... The reason we had the image that we had was because when we were on stage, that was it. We didn't hardly move, you know, in the beginning. And it was all dark, and I said nothing. Uh, and now I suppose people are surprised at the way I am, maybe speaking. What's that? That's the. I'm a bit of a person. <laughs> <laughs> That's the nice idea. <laughs> え、さかのぼれた<笑> で、僕はすごく好きなんだけど、僕はあなたが会員なんだろう。ある種のこう威圧感を客には耐えてるからじゃないですか。うん、そうかもしれないし、で、前期のエコファニストはね、みんなもう黙々と黙って演奏中にし
that's my way maybe of, of easing into you know a longer term image of, of me you know you know when I came maybe when he started I was probably awesome cracking jokes about how you know bird on a wire and it's just something that evolves you know I've, it's kind of inevitable like in order for me to feel good on stage I have to kind of loosen up in, in a lot of ways plus it means that you don't have to compare it to what you did if it's different it's valid you know just if I continue getting on stage believing that it, it was the same as 1981 I'd be feeling pretty strange you know <laughs> sounds like that one where's this belly? she's <laughs> さっきのことを考えてたんですけど、自分の夢とか、同じことをやりたいなと思うようになったんですね。で、そこでね、もう自分が尊敬してきた映画展なんかでも、シナプリシーとか、レアナードっていう公演してはい。あの、ステイでの
、あとプラスその昔っていうのは本当にインタビューの言葉とかを聞いててもなんかその根本的に苛立つっていうものがあってそれをなんか解消するためっていうか本当になんか世の中を塗り替えてやる的なそういうもうある種いかれるもう革命戦士的なイメージがあったのが今本当にその優しいエンターテイナー的なイメージその辺が大きく違うんじゃないかと思います。Because perhaps in the, in the early days,、uh, your lyrics were、uh, a bit more、uh, pointed, stuff like、uh, the cutter, do it clean.、Uh, you seem to be fueled by a kind of irritation, anger,、mm. a desire to, to change the world, to, to put it in his words.、Uh, that's why the,、uh, your current persona is sort of, you know, mellow entertainer. It seems to be a, an about face. I don't think there's anything mellow about. Yeah, I'll have to pick some lyrics out of there. I think I'm got my suit of armor on, so I found some kind of mean pack thing on, on something else. Basically, the same, exactly the same reasons I write. It's still born out of a little bit of frustration, you know? I, I don't understand. I think he'd miss,、uh, hmm. miss her. Yeah, he, he seems to think it's a more realistic approach. More of a realism、uh, infused the lyrics now. What, like, Estoy Candelabra, I'll be going brightly, believe I'm a solo star, it's twice lately, never l o o k e d I'm a little bit gibberish anyway. What's It's kind of my attempt at the new Esperanto. The <laughs> new Esperanto, of course. We can read it about that. I read Candelabra into the verb to Ben. Estoy Candelabra means to me, I'm bending the candle with both hands. It's just a kind of fake, half Spanish thing. So, I mean, I think maybe it, it's less metaphysical now. And the only reason it was metaphysical in the first place is because I didn't know how to write lyrics, you know. So, you know, like any old shit. The experience that cut it was just a phrase, I don't know what it meant, you know. I think it was about Jesus. And my part in his、uh, downfall. <laughs> <laughs> But it's still now.、Uh, <laughs> Your part is downfall. <laughs> yes, we read about that in the b i o l i f e I forgot about that. <laughs> But、uh, it's just, I mean, I do write from pretty much the same angles, but just maybe a little bit more focused now, the, the ideas in the head, you know. I think the lyrics are probably better, you know. Sometimes when I listen back to some bunny old things, I think, what the hell? Yeah. Oh, having said that, the killer moves to me one of the best lyrics ever written. What is it? The killer moves. The killer moves. Yeah, I, I, I think there's a lot of kind of. It's a different form of anger it's, or frustration. It's an insidious kind of frustration that creeps out at you from the songs on the stereo. You know, it's not as maybe in your face or something like that. Or like jazz or do it clean. But I think it's in that way a little bit more sophisticated, maybe, a bit more intelligent. I don't know, it's just, it's me, it's a, for all I know, the next album I do could be a punk album or a reggae album, but. I don't know. Yeah, I think I. He's right, I suppose. I, I think as well, not having will, so I've been sitting there with a face like, yeah, that's right. It's enabled me to just enjoy what I do now, you know, with Will and the band, he was a miserable sort, you know. So I think a lot of that stemmed from that, you know, it was a collective thing. So I was always wondering what the problem was, you know. So I think all I ever wanted to do was be in a group, I ended up with a miserable sort quite well, you know. <laughs> so you're a happy, you're a happy man now, I'm sure. Ah,、uh, definitely. I'm happy and well. Yeah, 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 I'm happy and well. Don't forget the Jesus in my opinion. Yeah, that's right. I forgot about that. I'm happy and well. 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 だ代表だったと思うんだけどもそれは何かというと、まあ、とにかくわけのわかんないものだったんで歌詞作りが非常にうま,うまくなったっていうことも言えると思うんだ、えー、だからカ,カッターに関してなんか
あれほとんど南沢さんでも今振り返って考えるとおそらくまああのイエス・キリストがいただく。自分、堕落したときに自分が何らかの価値で関連してるわけのわからないテーマだったんだけども、今の方がまあ、あのでしかもまあ周りにね、ウィルみたいな、むさ苦しいのもないからね、あのまあ、今の状況はまあ幸せだ。あのー、今回の,そのライブの選曲を見ても、その以前のバニーメンの曲と、あとソロになってからの曲との,そのオールスターズ的なイメージがすごくあるんですが、例えばその今言ったそのバイククリーナーに勝ったなりっていう曲は、今の山川さんの人間として、どういう気持ちで歌えてるのか。How does it feel to go back and do the、uh, Bunnyman I kind of I think I enjoy singing them more now because, again, I can hear what's going on. Um, I'm singing probably better than I sang one last night. Yeah, it, it kind of seems easier now to sing it.、Um, it's not so much, you know, this little angst ridden three minute thing. It becomes a proper song, you know.、Um, It's different, you know, obviously I can't even remember. It, it's been four years now since Jack and the Bunnymen, and, and nothing, nothing's ever going to feel like it does when you first start out, you know. It's like anything in life. But、um, I enjoy doing Bunnymen songs, because I think, I'll, you know, there's certain things that are, you can't teach. Funny people to play exactly like the Bunny Man played or like anyone played. I think we do them justice, you know. And I think sometimes in the older days, some of the songs may be, you know, the gigs, we were fantastic, it was the best live band going, but mainly because of that vibe and ambers, it wasn't necessarily that we always played great. People just used to go and go, yeah, I'm weird. Pop group, you know, because it's basically with the pop group that were a bit weird as well. And I think that was what people left gigs, the impression they left gigs with was just light smoke and psychedelia, you know. So it's nice in a way to kind of to be doing Bunny Man songs in a, in a different way, you know, I think. できるもんじゃないんだよね、はい、当時の演奏室に関して言えば、まあ、そんなに上等なもんじゃなかったんだけども一種独特の,、ね、あの雰囲気があったのでそれでまあ非常に好まれた、はいえー、バンドだったんだけれども今昔の曲をやると気分はいいですよ。Um, I don't know. I, I, I wasn't thinking about his laughing, I was just thinking about my.、Uh, I used to say something. I'm often in an altered state. Must be weird. Yeah, I'm sorry. 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 I'm
symbolizes uh, like sort of a, a return of, of your power, your, uh, I don't know, what's the word? It's life. Yeah, it's kind of, um, I've got confidence again. I think Candelon was uh, all about my losing confidence. That, that's what he prefaced it. He said Candelon was sort of like a requiem to uh, those you had lost around you, mm. your father, Pete, the guy in the Fountains, I believe. Well, actually, they died after um, I'd done the record, but it was kind of, it was more of a loss of, an era, you know, that's what it was about. Mm -hmm. And, you know, my dad dying before I made it was part of that. It was like him saying, it's a new era. And get on with it, you know. So, yeah, it was about that. Um, so, and this is me kind of saying, I've got my suit on and on again. Trying to find some kind of meaning. Still a bit kind of unsure, but I like the line, a peg to hang a hope upon. A peg to hang a hope upon. A peg. Peg? Peg? Clothes peg? Clothes peg, I see. I mean, that, that is kind of why I chose that at the beginning, because that's how... Oh, I see. Okay. <coughs> was there any stuff you this in there? No. <laughs> Do you know the Japanese for peg? I'm trying to think of what a good uh, word would be. Kotanga? Yeah. I don't know. I'm going to say that 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 I'm going to say what did he call it in the ashtrays there? Because there's no water, but the ciggies just go out straight away. It's a pamphlet, isn't it? A lack of oxygen in the air, perhaps. I've never noticed that. I've never noticed that. I've never noticed that. I'll go on that. No, it's what I know. Are we fit, is it fair to assume that, uh, uh, that your youth ended with uh, the Bunnymen? And that, you know, in that sense, that your general approach to music would be different now than it would have been than it was back then? I think I lost my youth when I was about 10. <laughs> and, you know, I think I've been writing about that ever since. <laughs> but, yeah. Uh, How did you finish your youth at 10? Some of the girls are there. Like, this is. No, I, I don't know. I just always felt a little bit older than I was, you know. Might have been to do with having an older brother. Um, I always got on better with older people. But basically, it was just a joke. Yeah, that's that's fair to say. Whatever it was. You <laughs> Whatever said. it was, you said. Well, it's just that if you felt that that being your youth, you know, you sort of uh, yeah, having the energy of youth. There, that was where. Loser. Whereas now, now it would be a different thing. Is it now, is it now just like a pure entertainment pursuit? Uh, is no. Type of thing, or? No, I mean, if you read the lyrics in here, or listen to them, it's not a, um, I'm not singing Fly Me to the Moon, you know. Still a bit weird. Still grappling with life's problems, you know. And I think that's what, what I've always done with the lyrics. It's kind of my 
struggle to understand what I'm about. Mm. Mm. But that's the same as it is, but I think he's right. Whether it was the bunny man or if I was working in a fish and chip shop, you know, people do change probably around. I think it happened really before I left the bunny man. It was, and that was why I wanted to get out because I knew. Back on the bunny man, what about a certain period in time and in my life and and the rest of the band's lives? Unfortunately, they didn't realise that. And, Still trying to flog a dead donkey, you know. Um, so, yeah, I'm in a lot of Candleland and Mysterio still coming to terms with not only what I have to, you know, it's not always struggle, but what I have to deal with as an individual, it's now kind of. I've got a history now, which makes it even weirder. Because people obviously do, you know, just all the comparisons between the bunny man and me now. It's, it's like Lou Reed when he did Sally Count Dance, you know. Probably got the same stuff held at him. Um, maybe with things like New York and Songs for Drella, he refound something. Although I, I think New York's very overrated and as far as really good tracks on it and the rest. Tuneless kind of rants. But um because I think I actually like the blue mask and stuff like that to me. To me anyone who's ever liked what I've done, whether it was with the bunny man or on my own, should like it for a reason other than they should want to get to know what's in my head, you know. That's why I like Lenny Cohen and, and Lou Reed. So to me it's just part of the old story, it's not a question of things ending or beginning, it's, it's just the way it changes, like the show and the sea. It's about how Lenny Cohen really. And that to me is what makes anything interesting. In music, I, you know, I like people unraveling who they are. But I like to unravel who I think that singer or writer is, you know. And to me, it goes beyond songs, you know. It's, I love songs, but it's not, I don't. Love people like Nana Kelly just so I can whistle a tune in the background. You know, it's, I love him because he's given something himself to me. You know. なんていうか、基本的なスタンスは変わってないはずだよと。でも自分の中のなんていうかな、やっぱり心の中でこうどっかが変わったって自分が他のメンバーは気づいてなかったんだけど、メコパニックのあれあるあれ種の時代性ってい
Because we have to get uh, photos as well. Oh, that looks so yes. anonymous. How many packets of phones have you got there? One for every pour, for every pour on your face. Who's the で、80年代の、80年代ロックとしての、あの、オリジナルを本当に飾ってきたのは僕が意外だったと思うんですけど。で、それがやはり90年代になって、そうやってあなたが変わっていったっていうのは、その80年代ロックっていうものは、もうそ
Mm -hmm. I had a big fight afterwards because uh, oh. he said the, the experience of seeing you was not as cathartic as it should have been. And his wife said he bullshit. He said it doesn't have to be cathartic as long as it's good pop. What's the difference? But kind of the fight escalated to the point where she left to go to her parents. And this is a shielty. Pardon? This is a show. <laughs> <laughs> His life story. Yeah. So well, this happened the day before yesterday after seeing the show. Yeah. And so um, anyway, they had the big argument over, it, over this, where he said it's supposed to be a more cathartic experience, yeah. uh, as the bunnies were. Um, last night was more no, cathartic. Oh, well, that was more cathartic. <laughs> yeah. It was the first one I was happy. Oh, really? Is that right? Yeah. Uh -huh. I think catharsis lay in the sake. I was just not so much in the sense. But last night it was a lot more. Like intense and uh -huh. like you should have come last night. You know the whole uh handy catalysis next time. So I show no put you know showing to you on it, uh no sake no the tariff. Which is one of the catalysis. You know that more handy the catalysis next time. Yeah, it's just more cathartic. Yeah, yeah. 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 They said, well, so the, 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 the cathartic side to your music is the same as it's always been. Yeah. There's no difference. I mean, so much, but just didn't have it, you know, uh -huh. um, generally when I was playing. So, yeah, I think it's always been. And there's one more thing here. He wanted you to comment on your former contemporaries, people who were sort of up and coming uh, when the bunnies were. Uh, due to the cure and new order. Uh, what do you have to say? Yeah, just still up and coming for one of these. <laughs> Um, no, I like the head on the door album. But I find them they started it just seems to be I think they were abandoned at the time. I did like the last single Friday, I don't know. They both just um so yeah, but I'm a bit sick of all the kind of you know that last stuff it needs to go up over there. Uh and you two I think have got a million times better than you know. Yeah. But some lawyers, you know, they're putting in the cards, so that's what I did. But that went on the time. But everything from the book, 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 the I thought new order. Uh, I think the album was great, but I don't know. I mean, new order and new order, like, you don't really have to then continue because it's so then, you know, they all have that kind of sound. Um, and because it's kind of basically pop music, there's no. They haven't really changed much. No pretense. No, it's it, but it's. I don't know what it is. I like it. Um, but I don't. Yeah, I'm glad you two have come out of it because I think if you don't let off rock bands that have to be the biggest group in the world, or, yeah, yeah, they kind of are. I think it's good. The, they improve, you know. I think it's incredible that they still, you know, that I actually like a lot of acts on the baby, you know. So, yeah. You know, I was wondering, why, why didn't you stick around in Liverpool and become that uh, sort of elder statesman, much the same way some of the older Manchester acts, so I stayed on for Well, I was, I was I just wear my outfit, isn't it, in Liverpool? Yeah. Yeah, so I'm still there. Mm-hmm. It just seems like you're sort of divorced from me. Well, kind of, because I, I, I never felt comfortable anywhere I was going. 
thought that I was separate from, from everyone else. You know, that was kind of what I thought you had to be because it made it easy. You know. Um, you know, it's often made it to kind of, you just look stupid and, you know, it's like Bowie saying he likes the psychedelic phase in 1980, and it wasn't. You know, it was probably the case of that. <laughs> yeah, no, that's kind of plus not there's nothing there. I like some of the new Liverpool stuff, but it's not to me the point of having the Beatles with the best things out of the by far. Well I mean they were out of the field. But uh yeah, I mean I kind of Plus, uh, when I go out there, I feel like it's seen a living something to do, you know. It's just like the footballs. Like I said, it'd be better than anything. I don't know, I think I might play it. <laughs> <laughs> you can move to Denmark. Ah, that's fantastic. Thank you. I think that was it. Yeah. So, what are you stepping with that? No, he doesn't. He just said uh, he. Uh, uh, well, sorry for all the uh, severe questions. I uh, can't imagine boxing without you. Uh, uh, although this might be something you feel uncomfortable being told, you, you might feel uncomfortable being told something like that. Uh, nonetheless, I hope to see you uh, uh, more active than ever in the future. Oh. Well, thank you. Come tonight and bring your wife. Yeah. And get <laughs> 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 Maybe something more out of it. Marriage counseling. Excellent. Thank you very much. Uh, you shouldn't argue. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Probably see you in the same year's time. Are you coming tonight? Uh, <laughs> I can't make it. I don't know the word. Yeah. Maybe next time.